Welcome. In this video, I will give a brief introduction to computational fluid dynamics, or in short, CFD. In general, there are three ways to approach the design and analysis of engineering system that involve fluid flow. Analytical, numerical, and experimental. In the analytical approach, one obtains the exact solutions to the differential equations which govern the flow physics of engineering systems. The problem is, most engineering systems in practice are too complicated and the governing equation cannot be solved exactly. Therefore, engineers employ either the experimental approach or numerical approach. The experimental approach typically involves the construction of models and testing them in a wind tunnel or other facilities, while in the numerical approach, especially in the modern days, computers are used for helping to solve engineering problems, such as in computational fluid dynamics methods. First, let us discuss the differences between the experimental approach and the CFD approach. In the experimental approach, because we are conducting physical tests, so the result is real. In contrast, the validity of CFD solutions based on whether you are solving the right equations. If you are making wrong assumptions and solving the wrong governing equations, the result will not be physically correct. The experimental approach might require complicated test rates or instrumentation, which may be hard to set up, even if such facilities are available the flow information that can be obtained from the experimental measurement is rather limited. For example, the F1 team may use the pressure probes to obtain the flow properties in this particular region, but they can't perform concurrent measurements at a plane in the front or at the back of this region because doing so will cause interference between the two sets of probes. In the case of CFD, no complicated test read is required. CFD users do not need to go to the experimental lab because everything is done on a computer. CFD also provides the details of flow, thereby allowing a comprehensive analysis of the flow field. Since each of these approaches has its strengths and weaknesses, they are seen as complementing each other. Today, modern engineers apply both the experimental and CFD analysis. For example, engineers may obtain global properties such as lift, drag, pressure drop experimentally, but use CFD to obtain the details of the flow field, such as shear stresses, velocity, and pressure profiles. Besides, Experimental data are often used to validate CFD solutions by matching the computationally and experimentally determined global quantities. CFD is then employed to shorten the design cycle through carefully controlled parametric studies, thereby reducing the required amount of experimental testing. Next, let's explore how CFD works. Fluid flows are governed by partial differential equations, which represent conservation laws for the mass, momentum, and energy. With the basic of computing knowledge, we know that computers perform only the simple arithmetic tasks, such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. If we were to use computers for solving the governing equations, we need to reduce the PDEs with a form that the computers can handle, which is the algebraic equation. Therefore, it is said that CFD is the art of replacing such PDE systems by a set of algebraic equations, which can be solved using digital computers. In general, the CFD modeling process involves five steps. The first is to create the flow domain. 
CFD users either use CAD software or the built-in geometric modeling features of a CFD package to create the geometry of the flow domain. Next, grid generation. Grid is a set of small elements that you obtain after the meshing process. The reason for dividing the domain into smaller elements is such that each of these elements will be treated as a control volume with simpler shapes and boundary conditions. We apply the discretized equations to each of these elements and obtain the local solutions. Then, by stitching all the local solutions together, we will have the flow information of the whole flow field. After generating the grid, we assign the physical properties of the fluid such as the density, viscosity, and so on. We also chose the equations to solve the solution algorithm, the discretization schemes, and assign the initial values at the start of the computation. During the solving process, we need to monitor the convergence. If the calculations goes smoothly, we will have a converged solution. But if not, then we need to go back to the previous steps to change some settings for rectifying the problem. The last step is post-processing. This is when the CFD users render the flow by using contours, vectors, streamlines, and so on to visualize the flow field and perform flow analysis. Bear in mind that the CFD solutions are not guaranteed to be physically meaningful because correct solutions depends on correct inputs. One should always check the validity of the solution by comparing some global quantities with the experimentally obtained results. Next, I would like to introduce some of the basic terminologies of CFD. The region in space in which the governing equations are solved is called the computational domain. The domains can be in two-dimensional or three-dimensional. During meshing, the volume of the domains is being divided into many small elements. These elements are called cells. For two-dimensional domains, the cells are areas, while for three-dimensional domains, the cells are volumes. The corner of each cell is a node. These are the inner nodes, while these are the boundary nodes. The divisions of an edge is called intervals. In this particular example, seven nodes are specified in the left edge corresponding to the six intervals along the edge. The boundaries of the domain are where boundary conditions are specified. Notice that for a two-dimensional domain, the boundaries are the outer edges, while for a three-dimensional domain, the boundaries are the faces. This is the end of the video. Thanks for watching.